in and urban communities have suffered a tremendous loss when it comes to job loss, to crime, to dilapidated houses, to dilapidated schools, to closed um, businesses, you name it, we have suffered it all. We have a lot of high crime, we have a lot of people that's at the tipping point and at risk of committing crimes due to the lack of um, jobs. And when you talk about um, trying to um, um, target and uh, combat crime, you don't combat that crime by hiring more police officers or by um, a police chief resigning and you hiring a new police chief. You um, combat crime by um, creating job opportunities because people out here selling drugs. I used to sell drugs. The reason why I sold drugs is because I needed to keep a roof over my head. I've been delivered. I'm blessed to be able to come and speak tonight before you guys because I used to be one of those on the corner selling drugs. But what I'm telling you guys, I talked to some young men today at Dewey Park, and um, I was just saying I hope that the Lord can bless us one day to be able to create some jobs for our young kids to be able to get off the streets. Because really what it is, it is an addiction. It's a disease that they have that um, they need help with. And helping them is not institutionalizing them by putting them back in prison. Helping them is by investing in our community, investing and creating jobs for our young kids. So at the end of the day, when y'all decide to um, vote for this master plan, which is a um, nice master plan, I think y'all did a good job. And I also want to give shots out to Greg Eason, who also helped lobby to get the master plan for the city of Flint. That's an unsung hero that's not here today that we don't always um, talk about that have done great work in the community. So I just want to give shouts out to him and let you guys know as we speak now today, Sylvester Broom Center is closed. I don't know if you guys know it. It's, it was a training facility for our, um, a community where people can go and have access to training opportunities. It's not open no more. Bunch school closed, Garfield school closed, Bryant school closed, Wilkins closed. I mean, all the schools and facilities is closed on the, seem like in the predominantly low income, moderate um, communities. I ask that you guys incorporate some type of um, advisory committee to deal with um, these commercial buildings, these facilities such as schools and buildings and create something. I did submit you guys a $20 million proposal. Um, I gave it to Megan back in um, February. It dealt with repurposing Bunch School, coming up with a Fresh Flint Garden Center on the north side, um, doing infrastructure, um, dealing with abandoned property. It's enough work in that neighborhood to create jobs for the next 10 to 20 years for people that don't have big masters in the social your degrees. Thank you and God bless. Maurice Davis. Hello. I'm in the second ward and uh, my name is Maurice Davis. I come to address the issue of some of the issues on like Civic Park and also the young men and women on the north end that do not have an income. Civic Park, I own the, the lot across from Civic Park. The historic sign is in my front door. And it's awful strange no one ever confronted me about the redevelopment of Civic Park School. With that said, I was wondering why do they have to uh, whatever the word is, to undo the historic marquee to come in and take out the blight and then bring in and keep it a historic where it should be historic instead of removing historic designation. And with that said, I understand why a factory would have to come in the middle of a neighborhood. Now, if you wanted to really develop that school, why couldn't it be for inner city, inner city kids that don't have nothing to do, such as... Uh, skilled trades learning or even fine arts and turning some for the like he just said a minute ago north end seem to be overlooked on every aspect i'm sure y'all doing the master plan but none of y'all live on the north end it ain't making no sense to me why do y'all sit up here and make plans for us and you don't feel our pain we have no lights we paying for street lights all the time permanently but the streets is dark over there on dayton ain't no lights over there 
So something is wrong with this picture. Y'all sit up here and you talk a talk, and at the end of the day, we still left without. No schools, no nothing. It ain't making no sense. All that money up there, y'all got checks. These kids on the north end have nothing. Something wrong with this picture. Now, when y'all going to quit playing with us, with all this money coming in, some of the millions could end up on the north end and make it downtown Flint stretch all the way over the city of Flint. Don't that make a little sense? It ain't making no sense. I, that, I bet you none of y'all live on Dayton, Baker, Bundy, or none of that. I bet you. But it don't make no sense. These kids on the north end have nothing. And y'all just sitting up here like it's, you know, the money come in, you do what you want to do. But you reap what you sow. And by the way, the master plan is in the master's hand, not y'all. Have a great day. Chris Dell Maroon. Thank you. My name is Chris Dell Maroon and I live in Flint, Michigan. I want to thank everyone involved with the master plan for their hard work and the time put in. Uh, I'm glad we're filming it. It's a good use of some of that $1.2 million. My, one of my concerns is that the, the developers went to some people, not necessarily any of the nine members on the commission, but went to some people to get what they want included in the plan. I believe the plan is picking winners and losers. When the plan takes a commercial strip, say along Saginaw Street, Pearson Road, Dort Highway, and eliminates some of those districts, some of those uh, commercial buildings from being included in the city corridor, I believe, in my, in my opinion, I believe that that reduces the value of those commercial properties. Likewise, when it's done in the, in the neighborhoods to, uh, to do the, uh, uh, the, the green neighborhoods, okay, with the larger lots, some people that live in those areas will not be able to have a larger lot simply because of their location or they did not take advantage of what, might, what some might call an opportunity. It diminishes the value of their property. No one will buy their 50 by 100 foot lot if all the other lots in, the, in that neighborhood are 100 by 200, for example. It diminishes the value. Um, we've, I've heard in many of the meetings, uh, Commissioner Patrick, you've talked about uh, uh, his, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, urban homesteading, farms, agriculture. What I say is you need to look at what is permissible versus what is allowed and what is zoned. I'm not necessarily saying I'm for or against the animals in, in neighborhoods, but we need to know what it means. On page 64 of the plan, it talks about urban, urban homesteading. It doesn't use the term that you've referred to often as farming, but it talks about urban, urban homesteading and it talks about livestock. Um, I'm concerned about road diets on page 80 and 81, the traffic flow. University Avenue and Fifth Avenue, you look at that, it's terrible. On page um, Max Brandon in the, in the master plan, page 27, it does not include all of Max Brandon. On page 133, it talks about the Flint City Market. The Flint City Market is separate and distinct from the Flint Farmers Market. I don't believe there should be any reference in the master plan regarding different businesses. The Flint City Market is a location on Dort Highway. It has nothing to do with the Flint Farmers Market. I've been to some meetings. They talk about city assets. Well, Atwood Stadium is no longer a city asset. Genesee Towers is no longer a city asset. The service center is no longer a city asset. These assets, which belong to the city, which belong to the people, have been given away. And I believe they've been given away prior to any bankruptcy filing, OK? So, so the properties end up in the hands of who the city wants. It's, it's, it, it's a bad thing. But I think overall, the plan is picking winners and losers. Uh, your plan talks about historical districts, and that should be kept in uphold. Civic Park. There is no reason to tear, there's no reason to tear that, am I out of time? Oh, okay, I didn't know. Right, thank you.
R. L. Mitchell. I'm R. L. Mitchell. Uh, I live in the Third Ward, Mr. President, and I'm here to speak for the people for the, 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 uh, the thank you for the twenty million dollars for that black program the t demolition. I was in I was in the, I'm in the zone. My house is in the zone of the demolition. That's why I'm thanking you for it. And at the same time, I'm I'm uh, appalling this stuff because last week I was here talking about you're gonna make fent out of a farmland. And uh, everywhere I go, I'll be blighted out. My page found me in this old abandoned building, but I was but then he put me in another one, but then don't allow me to have no company. I still feel black, but I feel like I'm you guys is really doing good by bringing that demolition in flip and tearing out because I got a plan to, I got, I'm out, I'm, li I'm finna get uh, my social security, but I found out the social security done ran out of money and stuff and, uh, and all that stuff and uh, that's another, and I wasn't born in Flint, I was born down in Georgia. And uh, I was three years old, they made me pick cotton. You ever heard the saying that said the hand that pick cotton can pick the president? I feel like uh, I don't have to do nothing now. I had a plan, but long as, as you can see, I can sit on the premises and still living. But the president right now, in a Republican, feel like I'm finna get payback no matter what. I don't have to do nothing because uh, you keep pushing them. Oh, hello, Peter. And uh, in in you hear that. But anyway, man, I, I'm here to, man, people's grinning and stuff, and they ain't much. And uh, I got, every time I get some new clothes, a roof wouldn't fix, and, and Sims wouldn't lend me $500 to fix the roof, and now you're going to tear it down and put some old, that's why I pause at the same time to bring some fire manuals in Flint, and, and I don't, Hey, I come up all in Flint, Michigan to, to get treated like this and all these stupid, drunken, idiot, I mean, stupid people's up. Mr. Mitchell, all Mr. Mitchell, thank, thank you, sir. <laughs> Natalie Pruitt. My name's Natalie Pruitt. I was born in Flint, Michigan at St. Joseph Hospital. Lived here until I went to college and came straight back. Um, I'm really happy to be here before you tonight and say that I support the approval and adoption of this plan. I think that that map up there, that this plan organizes our city in a way that is more coordinated and more effective. And what I mean by effective is a better quality of life for all of our residents. Every day, I talk to people, I talk to my neighbors that live next to abandoned houses and live next to tall grass, and I think that our residents and our homeowners deserve a quality of life that's different from that. I do not think that this plan is picking winners and losers. Um, we have heard some criticism for demolition I don't know a single resident who lives next to or across from a blighted, vacant house that doesn't want that house torn down. So um, I guess I will close by saying I approve and support this plan because I think it will create a better quality of life for all of our residents.